Hello and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy and this time I want to talk about the Ainsfield Wolf Book Awards because this week is Cleveland Book Week and the week that the Ainsfield Wolf Award is awarded. Yeah, I'm doing great talking today. Um, anyway, I do live in Cleveland so that's kind of a big deal to me. Also, I work in a public library and the Ainsfield Wolf Award recognizes books that have made important contributions to our understanding of racism and our appreciation of the rich diversity of human cultures. So this excerpt is from the actual website. Cleveland poet and philanthropist Edith Ainsfield Wolf established the book prizes in 1935 in honor of her father John Ainsfield and her husband Eugene Wolf to reflect her family's passion for issues of social justice. Today it remains the only American book prize focusing on works that address racism and diversity. Past winners have presented the extraordinary art and culture of peoples around the world, explored human rights violations, exposed the effects of racism on children, reflected on gr growing up biracial, and illuminated the dignity of people as they search for justice. Edith Ainsfield Wolf is kind of cool because she was a poet, so she was contributing her own work, but then she also spent 20 years working with the Cleveland Public Library. Uh, making sure that the library had books from all different cultures and was a forum where citizens could go to talk about issues of the day. The award itself was established back in 1935, which, like, racism was kind of being talked about, but wasn't, like, the focal point. Like, we haven't reached the civil rights of 1960s yet. There are a lot of books that have won the Ainsfield Wolf Award, and I gotta say, I've only read two of them. There are, like, several authors where they had one book, win the award and I just haven't read that. I've read other books by them, so maybe I need to work on my reading. This video is going to be books that I personally feel like have impacted my understanding of racism and different cultures, kind of going with the theme of what the awards are, but these are books that I've actually read. The first Ainsfield Wolf book award winner that I've read is The Color of Water by James McBride, and it won the award in 1997 in the nonfiction category. So this is a memoir by James McBride about his family, and he grew up in a black community, and he always thought that his mom was just light-skinned. Until he gets older, and his mom tells him how she's actually white, and about her journey of going to Harlem and marrying, you know, the black, the black father, and just really his understanding of his own racial identity, but also the racial identity of his family. I had to read this book for school, and so I probably kind of read this with like a, ugh, I have to read it, attitude. I think it was summer reading also, like even less, like I didn't really want to read it. So I honestly don't think that this one impacted me that much. Like it was good to like read a book about different people, but like I live in a community where there are tons and tons of biracial people because we're such a diverse community. So I didn't really, there is nothing like earth shattering about this book, honestly. At least I don't remember. Also, it's been more than 15 years since I've read it. So yeah, that's one that I've read. There is one Ainsfield Wolf Book Award winner that I have read and loved, and it is Hidden Figures by Margaret Lee Shetterly. It won last year in 2017, and also in nonfiction. And it is the story of really three female mathematicians, black mathematicians, working for NASA and helping with the space program. One of them is an engineer, one of them is like on more of the administration end, um, and one is Katherine Johnson, who is just this amazing mathematician who is like just light years ahead of like all of us. Like they're planning to go to the, Mar the moon and she's like working on Mars. Like, just like, ah, I got this. Um, so it's true stories about actual women who worked at NASA and about racism and what that was like for them being black and women working in a predominantly white male organization, working in science, uh, which women aren't really actively encouraged to go into, um, and to do it in the South. So it's super fascinating, super interesting. I love space. So I was just eating this up completely. I loved this book. I also really love the movie. Um, so yeah, this one is just, it's awesome. So awesome. So the first books that really got me thinking about race, I think, 
were the American Girl books and specifically Hattie's story, who is this black slave child. She grows up on a plantation, but then we watch her travel to the north and escape slavery and try to set up their new life in a northern city. And it's just... I read it when I was like eight. So to me, that was the first time that I was thinking about where, like the history behind racism and how Addie's treated differently because of her skin color, even when she gets to a Northern city um, and is free, like she's still treated differently. So that book, the Addie series by Connie Porter made a huge impact on me personally, trying to understand race, especially when I was so young. Um, like the rest of these are books that I read as an adult or teenager, but like that one. So I've also read A Long Way Gone by Ishmael Bey. I think I read this one like right after college. It wasn't published till 2007, 2008, so I would out of college by that time. This one follows a teenager in Sierra, Sierra Leone who was abducted, like captured by the army, and then forced to be a soldier. Until he's rescued when he's like 16 and the UN takes him away to like the, I think the US. But he gets taken out of Sierra Leone and he, this is his memoirs reflecting on what it was like to be a child soldier and just really was going through his brain and all. So this one is more about cultural diversity and just that entire growing up and being a soldier, especially that young and doing it involuntarily um, and to really see what's going on in Africa and in countries like Sierra Leone. And that one just kind of completely like was like I didn't know a lot about child soldiers at all or really think about African communities in that way. So this one really like was a whole new experience for me and a whole new way of life. And like, oh, there are some people out there who have really, 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 really crappy lives. Definitely made me think about things that I didn't even know were there to think about. More recently, I have read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. So this is written by Trevor Noah, the um, the host of The Daily Show. And this is about his childhood growing up in South Africa. But he's born to a white father and a black mother, which is completely illegal under apartheid. Like just the fact that he exists is illegal, which is why it's called Born a Crime. And it's really funny, but it's also really sweet and poignant and enlightening about what it was like living up in apartheid and from somebody who's kind of not really in either group. This was another one that was just like completely like, I knew about apartheid, I knew it existed, but to like actually see it and to see it in this way was super enlightening. So the next book on my list is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. This is a collection of essays and they really just cover everything from racism and how we treat African Americans, how we treat women in this country, pop culture references, like how women are portrayed in the media, um, talks about sexuality, talks about academia, and just literally everything. And just like every essay in here made me stop and think. And a lot of them I agreed with, some of them I hadn't thought about. There were a few that were kind of super uncomfortable, um, but that's all kind of the learning experience. So I also read Kindred by Octavia Butler, and this one follows Dana, who is an African American woman an educated African-American woman in the 1970s and she ends up traveling back in time and meeting one of her ancestors who was this white plantation owner and what she thought about her ancestor turns out to not exactly be the truth and maybe the fact that this white guy is one of her ancestors isn't necessarily the greatest thing like it's not exactly a riveting love story that's what I'm gonna tell you um, and it's brutal and it deals not only with slavery and how African Americans were treated back then, but also how they're treated in the 1970s, um, which is when the book was written. So getting to see a more modern perspective of what racism still looks like today and how we're still dealing with the consequences of slavery, even, you know, 100 years later, 150 years later. I also read I Am Alfonso Jones by Tony Medina with art by John Jennings and Stacey Robinson. So this one tells the story of a young African-American boy who is shot just for being black, basically. He's out shopping, doing normal stuff, and he didn't do anything wrong and he gets shot. And it explores his journey through the afterlife as he meets all these historical civil rights 
characters and their stories and their experiences being black and about racism in the U.S. and to really explore kind of this bigger picture and how it's this ongoing problem and where we've been and where we are and how far we still have yet to go. Um, I also like the fact that it is a graphic novel, so it's a little bit faster. Um, I wouldn't say it's lighter because it's a very dark topic, um, but it's more accessible to other people. So I also picked The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which kind of follows a similar theme. And this we have Star who is dealing with the fact that she watched one of her friends get shot right in front of her by a white cop merely because the guy was black. And the cop thought he was reaching for a gun even though there's no gun and there's like just and what it does to the community and Star having to deal with this both in her black community where she lives but also going to a predominantly white school and seeing how her white peers think about this and talk about this and seeing it from people who don't know that that's her best friend. Um, and she also has an uncle who is a cop. So getting to see what it's like for a black cop to also have to deal with this in that kind of society. There's so much going on in the Hey You Give and so many layers and so many like different viewpoints that we get. So I highly recommend this one and I'm super excited for that movie coming out. Super excited. All right, the next book on my list is The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin O'Leary Sands. I also really liked Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe, but I picked The Inexplicable Logic because it kind of deals with the whole Mexican-American family racism dynamic a bit more. So we have a white boy who was adopted by a, his, a Mexican-American family, specifically a single father who is gay. And the boy... <laughs> is just dealing with his own identity, trying to figure out who he is. He's at a point where he's thinking about like what his white father was like that he never met and doesn't know anything about. He's really going through a hard time and he's becoming violent and acting out and he's like, is this nature? Like, is this just in my genes? What was my father like? Um, so we see him struggling with his identity because he always grew up in this Mexican family and feeling Mexican, um, but also this is part of him that's white. And so I think the racism thing is definitely, dealt, like, the whole race issue is definitely dealt more in The Inexplicable Logic than Aristotle and Dante. And the last book I picked is Flight by Sherman Alexie. This one deals with a Native American teenager who ends up just, like, appearing in other Native Americans' bodies, kind of like a quantum loop thing where he just becomes the other person. Um, so he's traveling back in time and seeing different Native Americans and really getting to see, like, what it was like when it was like the US was mostly just Native American country and like there weren't all these white settlers and what happened when the white settlers came and like how Native Americans are treated now, um, which is really not good. Um, so getting to see a whole bunch of different experiences within this one book, but also still having the same narrator and this teenager really struggling with his identity and who he is. These are all books that pretty much made me think about parts of racism or culture that I hadn't thought about or that I needed like for like it helped to see more of that. So these are books that I all highly recommend. I will post the complete list of all the books I talked about in the description below as well as the Ainsfield Wolf Book Awards website so you can find out more about them. So peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye!